Hi everyone, my name is Yesenia Vargas. I'm with Energy Upgrade California. If you haven't heard of us, we're actually your state's uh, program for energy efficiency. Uh, we're all helping to move California towards its energy goals. So you can find out more about us at energyupgradeca.org. But just to give you the one minute spiel, we were created out of SB 350 in 2015. And that's when California set very ambitious energy goals for its future. So as you know, we've always been a leader in sustainability um, and environmentalism. And so we started a program saying, you know, we want to go um, to back to pre-1990s levels of emissions. We want to double energy efficiency and we want to have our grid be at least 30% renewables all by 2030. And the good news is we're actually on track. Um, the other side is we still do need everyone's buy-in and we need everyone's support to reach these goals. And so we work with a coalition of cities, community groups, nonprofits, and small businesses and chambers uh, to make sure that these goals get to happen. So today's panel is all about the small business side of this. Um, a lot of times when you hear the term green business, you might think this is kind of out of your reach. Uh, if you can't install solar panels, um, and for a lot of small businesses, just the costs of going green can seem daunting. But we're here to really break it down and you know, let you know that becoming a green business is very achievable. It's not only good for you know, the future of our state, but it's also good for the bottom line of your business, both in terms of saving energy and saving money, and in terms of communicating with your customers that you are an ethical business and that you know, they, this is something they can be proud to support. So joining me today, uh, we have some energy leaders who exemplify these values. So uh, we have Pilar Zuniga. She is the owner of Gorgeous and Green, a eco-friendly florist in the Bay Area. Uh, they are still open right now during COVID. Uh, we have Walter Contreras, so repping Southern California. Uh, he is with the National Latino Evangelical Coalition, which has worked uh, for a couple decades with political groups with businesses, all of that in terms of, uh, you know, helping to boost the moral profile of the environmental movement. And he also works with neighborhood community entrepreneurs, which helps boost the profile of Latino small businesses in Southern California. And uh, last but not least, we've got Cindy Smith. She's from Southern um, SDG&E. So that's one of the investor owned utilities uh, of our state that we work with. And she's here to talk specifically about programs that your utility can provide you to help your business go green. So all that lengthy introduction, <laughs> um, we can pretty much hop straight into this. Um, so I just wanna start off with a, my first question for the panelists. Um, you know, How did environmentalism start to become an issue for you? When did you become aware that this was something that would cross over with businesses? And if you could just expound on that. Sure. Did you want me to start? Go ahead and start. Sure, let's go alphabetically. All right, great. Um, so my name is Pilar and I started Gorgeous and Green in 2008. Um, and initially it was always about being sustainable and eco-friendly. Um, and so with that in mind, every business decision I made was thinking how can I make this more sustainable? How can I be more eco-friendly? So in a way, I kind of have a, a leg up from other people in that um, I, you know, started thinking that way at the very beginning. So it's it, I've been trained <laughs> to think through continuously every business decision. Um, and I think that, that that really makes a difference. But it doesn't mean that you can't necessarily backtrack, you know, and, and go back a little bit and be like, oh, why did I, we choose this particular item to stock, right? So um, it's just, it just be, it was just, it's a part of my name and it's always been a part of my thinking. So um, being um, obviously considerate of light bulbs was something that I thought of before um, it was even brought to my attention. So, um, being a green certified business, for example, was sort of uh, Im implicit, it was implied. So that's a little bit about me. It's a, it's a floral design and boutique. It was a retail shop for a while too. So I kind of have a full gamut of, of how to be sustainable. Great. 
And Walter, how about you? When did environmentalism and like energy efficiency start to be a concern uh, in the community that you saw? Okay, it's, it's been a concern for me and many of our leaders. I represent a, a, uh, a national organization that uh, uh, has more than 8 million followers in the, uh, the faith-based religious uh, groups of people that are Latino in our country. It's the largest Latino evangelical coalition that we started uh, um, you know, at the end of the era of uh, uh, Bush's son, so at the beginning of Obama. And we realized that we need to create a platform that educates, that really uh, uh, gives opportunity to people to really make serious decisions about the environment. So uh, with that in mind, we created this organization with a uh, few objectives, but one of them is that, how can we how can we be better stewards of the energy that we have and how can we be more friendly with the environment? So at this point, we have uh, thousands of people to follow us and we have uh, organizations all over the country uh, that we represent, especially in California, which is the largest state. We have lots of uh, Latino speaking churches, which we are training for them to be uh, environmental friendly and many decisions. As you know, most of the stuff we do it uh, uh, respecting the fact that we are not only bilingual, but bicultural. And uh, because we don't want to be by ourselves. <laughs> in other words, in this country, you know, we have lots of minority groups of people who need to be trained and need to know what steps and what they can do in order for them to make the right decisions to defend the environment. Yeah, and I mean, leading into that, uh, obviously, this is a business conference. And so one of the questions we always get um, is, well, I'd love to be a green business, but I have to think of the bottom line, especially now that, you know, small businesses are being pressed more than ever with the current situation. So um, back to the panelists, how do you balance this with the bottom line um, in terms of like sinking costs into this? Or was it something that always paid for itself? And you could just go on that. Um, for me, I think, you know, uh, so it's, it's kind of a two part thing in that sometimes actually looking for sustainable uh, or more eco friendly options is more cost effective. Um, because it might be recycled from another material. Um, so you might end up saving in cost. But the other issue was that for me, as, and I, we might touch on this later, is that um, developing my, I developed my business model around standing out as a sustainable and eco-friendly business. So it was always about, hey, you know, kind of like the lights are on me because you want to choose me because I am sustainable and eco-friendly. And so hopefully by maybe spending a little bit more on a, something, I actually bring more money through the door because I bring more customers in. So, um, you know, I think uh, obviously I tried to have a business mindset and make the most economical choices, um, you know, and, and surprisingly like changing, I at one point had like, uh, 60 or 70 light bulbs in my retail shop and they were all regular. Some of them are really small, but they were regular wattage of like 20 or 40, um, and so that was a lot of energy, right? Um, because that, I, I was like, oh, if I transition to this other light bulb, it costs more, but the light bulb lasts like a lot, very long time and automatically I'm gonna see savings on my bill. Um, so, so I guess what I'm saying is that sometimes by spending a little bit more upfront, I actually ended up making more money for, as, from a business perspective. Right, um, choosing the biodegradable bags. Maybe they cost twice as much, but 
in the long run, you know, $20 um, for like all plastic versus $40 for um, compostable, $20 isn't going to be a major thing for me, um, especially because I was I felt good. It was a conscious decision. To, and I get to be able to say this is compostable. And it's it's showing you more of how sustainable I am and how I take this seriously. So you can trust me and then I'm going to do what I say and hopefully bring people back to me. So, um, so yeah, so I think that there's, it's, it's, it's a part philosophical discussion and it's part long-term mathematics, right? Looking at how it, how it works over time. Yeah, and I know Cindy from sdg &E will touch on how uh, you can talk to your local utilities about making these changes, about using LED light bulbs, which are huge energy savers and help you be more energy efficient. So Walter, same question. Um, how are you seeing um, this question of environmentalism fit in with people's concerns about, you know, the bottom line, I have to, you know, stay in the black as a business? Well, uh, my goal is to include as many people as I can who probably are from different cultures, in different language, the senior citizens, the poor people, and try to help them to be able to learn how to use time, uh, and we call it TOU, time of use energy. And that entails for me to develop a, a large group of ambassadors, I call them ambassadors, by which we will, we are targeting, you know, churches, uh, faith-based organizations, and the community itself. We go through the media and many other ways. And for us, the bottom line is helping people to know how to better use electricity. And uh, since things are changing all around and we have to save energy and uh, sometimes folks do not have those good habits of how to save energy. So we have seen, you know, pastors and leaders and groups out there, you know, becoming the agents of training others in different settings, especially now that we have the COVID-19, uh, many folks tend to stay at home so we use the media and we also use other settings to be able to to help folks to understand that we must be good stewards of the energy that god has given us and in that way we can create a movement and that movement is towards you know being more friendly to the environment that we have yeah and that kind of leads off into I wanting to veer into you know, businesses that go go green, go eco-friendly, or even individuals that join this kind of movement, um, it's satisfying in terms of, you know, seeing your personal uh, savings or seeing the impact that you're making, but we're also always looking for that connection of, well, how is this affecting my state, my country, the globe? Uh, environmentalism has been so topical in, re in recent years as we keep seeing more extreme weather events. And we keep seeing all these conversations about the future of our um, energy and sustainability. And so in terms of going green, how have you kind of pushed that to create a larger buy-in? Or I guess another way to phrase this is more of a culture of sustainability. Um, is this something you pass on to employees? Is, how do you reach out to the community and also help them go green? Um, and so, yeah, you guys could talk about that. Um, I guess you want me to go. <laughs> well, I think, um, so for me, it, you know, it's being sustainable, kind of the idea started when I was going to college, for example. And, um, you know, I think there was, you know, you get, you kind of have a realization of sorts of how, how you fit into the world. Um, and I think with today's youth, we have, um, you know, a huge group of people that they have always sort of been in the know of, uh, what has happened to this planet. And, um, you know, that it's not my experience, but, 
uh, it's something that I have learned, but I think that, that there's this consciousness that is that has evolved where people, you know, these young folks are just saying like, look at what, like we are gonna spend the next 70 years here, or 75 years here, and look at what you sort of left behind for us. <laughs> um, so I think, you know, I think it's a tough thing for some of us, you know, my age or even generations above me who kind of need to learn um, and to kind of get on board or um, hop on the train of like, not only do we need to um, educate, but we have to take action very quickly. Um, and I think that that, uh, maybe that, that fire hasn't been lit um, everywhere. It hasn't been lit in all communities. Um, you know, we, we talk about um, lack of education, but also when people have, are dealing with like day-to-day -day real life situations where the environment, you can't really take a part of their life because they're just trying to survive or they're just trying to fit, feed their kids or um, get food on the table um you know or trying to stay safe uh because of what is happening in the world you know and inequalities and injustice so it, it sort of this all fits in i think um in that it should be a part of that movement and we also have to be culturally aware and uh you know it's 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 hard because I, I, you know, I'm a bit of a, I would say I'm a bit of a preacher, <laughs> uh, you know, because I have learned and because I've developed my, my business being sustainable. But at the same time, I, I have to take note of where people are um, in their own lives. Um, but really I, I, what I do is I lead by example and I just try to normalize that these, these are decisions that we can make um, this is a way of life. This is a, a thought process that you can have throughout your day, um, multiple times a day. And um, hopefully by doing that, um, it will kind of, it, it will spread um, the normalcy of this is, this is our life. This is, this should be how we, how, how we live um, by really taking consideration of all of these things um, and, and making decisions for, you know, not just the next generation, but two generations from now could have like a very devastating experience on this planet if we don't take immediate action now. So. Yeah, and going off of that, Walter, I know your work within the faith community is really built off of this because sometimes it feels like the face of environmentalism in the US is a white one it feels like resources and programs are kind of aimed for, you know, what uh, what maybe political critics might call the Whole Foods crowd. Uh, <laughs> and so it's really important to reach people where they are and through the moral systems that they're, they already listen to, through opinion leaders they already listen to. So how have you seen people respond when it's, you know, their local preacher, or their local reverend uh, telling them about the importance of saving energy? Like what difference does that make? Well, I think that my approach and the, the approach of our organization is to, first of all, be intentional. Intentional in the fact that we must be out there and being a voice, and especially when you talk about responsibility of a preacher or somebody in the faith. We are just like prophets of, uh, of the environment, let's say, in a way that we could uh, uh, help folks to understand their moral responsibility that they have to be good stewards of what God's given us. You know, in the Bible constantly it talks about that if we don't keep our stewardship, well, God will require us an account to what we do. So my approach is to build, you know, um, uh, consciousness and at the same time through, through different events that we have through even what we preach from the platform, through uh, special events, uh, even for example, right now with COVID-19, we are out there 
and 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 in the midst of, uh, for example, on a on a Friday we have more than four thousand cars that come in and pick up food in a particular area that we're working. So we are there distributing my material developing relationship. We are working with different folks from in our states who are becoming ambassadors so that they can also do the same thing that I do to create and build capacity for folks to understand that it is our responsibility. God is not going to make a miracle if we don't do our part. So some of us say, oh, if we just pray or if we just like let somebody else do it. It doesn't work like that. It is my and your responsibility to really understand that it is our moral responsibility to make sure that whatever we do, and in this case, I work a lot with uh, different minority groups. I speak, I, I work a lot with the immigrant. I work a lot with uh, the, the el older uh, uh, folks, work a lot with people of faith. So how can we penetrate different, I call them different, uh, pathways, you know, natural pathways where we can connect with new people and with people so that we can help them to understand the moral responsibility of being good stewards of the environment. So we have different events. We, we are get invited in churches. Uh, uh, we, uh, we, we, we work with the elderly. We work with people who probably don't go out anywhere, who are probably never going to be approached by anyone. So that is our goal, to really go to all the deep corners of our country that have people that probably speak different than us or have a different culture with us, but they can get the same assessment and they can get the same help and the same training that other kids in their own language. Yeah, and so now I hopefully we've gotten the audience really invested in how they can be energy stewards and how they can... Um, go environmentally uh, friendly. So I wanted to uh, bring Cindy into this conversation. Uh, and if you could just tell us about some of the programs available out there for small businesses, specifically, um, I know a lot of us right now are working from home uh, if you're an, in a non-essential industry or if you haven't fully reopened. And so what's that like? What are, what are some normal resources available and what are maybe some play gear resources? <laughs> Play gear. <laughs> That's scary. Um, yeah, I'm working from home. Um, I think probably a majority of SDG e um, staff are, are working from home unless it's essential for them to be in the office or in the field um, right now. So we're taking, you know, another look at this year as it's changed dramatically and trying to come in and try to find ways for businesses and, and you know, residential customers as well to try to help them um, with more programs. So since the 1980s, we've started implementing energy efficiency programs um, and offerings for customers in order to reduce their, their carbon footprint, um, reduce their energy, reduce their costs. And um, just some, some data here, we've, uh, since 1984, it looks like, 1984 to 2019, um, we have, our energy efficiency programs have saved uh, over 3.7 million gigawatt hours and approximately 780 megawatts and over 24 million therms. So that's, that's a good amount of savings. And so we try to pass that through to the customers so that they can both also learn about energy efficiency. It's uh, energy efficiency is really about two things. It's about how much power you're using and how you're using it. So it's both an operational and a behavioral aspect. So one of the first steps that we take uh, with customers is on behalf of education. So it's letting you know what kind of energy that you have in your home or your business, how you're using it and how it's affecting your bills. Um, even I learn things every day that I'm maybe not doing the most efficient way possible. Um, things like resetting your thermostat, um, setting controls, um, timers, um, things like that can have a huge impact and that's part of the behavioral aspect. Then there's the operational aspect, changing out, like you said, um, to more efficient equipment. So changing out your light bulbs, 
um, replacing old um, inefficient um, equipment to newer, more energy efficient equipment. But we know that also comes with a, a price tag. Um, it's it's not you know something that you can exchange for free, so that's why we created programs, um, also mandated by the CPC that everybody kind of pays into. Um, so we build offerings. We also work to um, change the marketplace so that you have more options. Customers have more options with what type of equipment they can buy, and then we buy that cost down a little bit to you. So we try to take care of. Um, the difference between the old energy or you know, old non-energy efficient equipment to upgrading to that new equipment. We try to give you an incentive that will take care of that in-between cost. Um, and so that's where our programs come into play. So for if we're talking about small business customers, um, which I believe that this is um, really geared towards, the different programs, one that I manage for sdg &E is the Business Energy Solutions Program. And that is was designed originally to reach out to hard to reach customers, um, like Walter was saying, customers that don't necessarily have the time or the money or the energy to go out and research different ways to be energy efficient. We kind of, we come to you. So we have contractors that will reach out to your business and give you a no cost audit and then install some things for free and some things at a cost or a copay. Um, and so that's one thing that we've done and we've also added on bill financing. So you can actually finance energy efficient upgrades um, over the cost of $5,000 at no, no interest, 0% interest. So if you have a project that you're wanting to do, you're really looking to become energy efficient there are a lot of options for you. There's educational options at our Energy Innovation Center for both residential and commercial customers as well. Um, so there's there's a wide array of projects and um, and uh, facilities and offerings for you to use. Um, yeah, is, do you have any anything else you'd like me to touch on? Yeah, I think um, one of the things Energy Upgrade California is always um, telling businesses to start off with is, okay, if you don't know how to get really started on this issue, call your local utility provider and ask for an energy audit. And that can help you figure out, oh, well, maybe there's a draft and that's why I'm like, you know, losing a ton of money with overusing my AC because all the cold is escaping or, oh, maybe I'm able to replace this old fridge for an energy efficient one, um, something with like an energy star label, right. um, so things like that. So if you could touch on um, how people can go about getting an energy audit, and I know those have recontinued now in COVID. Yes, yes we were due to COVID, we were shut down um, and we could not do any on-site audits um, from, from April through May. We are back now functioning, um, I did check. And so the Business Energy Solutions Program, they are doing on-site audits and installations. Um, that one is is kind of a more of a one-stop shop. So that's one of the first things that people tend to go to because the auditor is also the installer. They can do the audit, tell you exactly what you might be able to change out to become more energy efficient, tell you what the incentives are, um, and then they do the installation right there for you. So I always tell business customers, especially small business customers, to start there. The other option, which is a little bit more comprehensive audit, it does look for multiple technologies, um, multiple offerings. It can really tell you all different um, water savings, um, gas savings. Um, that's the comprehensive audit program. And all of these programs are located if you go to the SDGE website, scge.com, and you click on the, um, the tab at the top that says business and then energy savings. That will take you and just making sure it's actually business and then savings center. So if you go to our website, click on businesses, energy, the savings center, you'll see all of the different programs. There's, there's a wide array of programs some specific to certain businesses. There's also a lot of tips and services like um, like our uh, workshops, training, um, safety inspections, um, 
we've got a lot of tips on lighting. So it's, it's kind of taking care of both that operational aspect and that behavioral aspect as well. So it's making sure that you have the opportunity to research energy efficient measures, but then also that you're learning how best to use them so that you can get the most energy savings, most bang for your buck. Thank you. And I know that um, not everyone uh, who might be on is in sdg and &E territory. So if you're in SCE Southern California Edison or PG&E uh, Pacific Gas and Electric Territory, these same resources are available. Yeah. Talk to your local utility provider or visit their website and um, you can get started with energy audits and get started with energy efficiency. So just to go back to the panelists for a quick question. Um, Pilar, I know you previously mentioned being green business certified. And so I wondered if you could maybe talk about, you know, how the green business network helps you promote or just generally how you can, how being a green business also helps you boost your profile with customers, you know, how you can brand yourself as a green business. Yeah, so um, I became a green business from the very beginning. Actually, when I, when I first started my business, it was at home. And so that I had a benefit of, of actually making my, you know, part of the certification process is they come and visit the workplace and basically they, you know, you're supposed to have made changes, but if you haven't made all the changes, the nice thing is, is then they, they can tell you when, what you need to do. So um, you have, you know, your local water utility will come out. Um, and your gas and electric company will come out and then you have a, a, another certification person come out. So they're going to come in and they're going to like, they are automatically zoned in on what things need to change and if you've done them or not. Um, if you're, you know, recycling, recycling properly, composting, if you got the right light bulbs in, um, if there's a better way to do something. So we were, you were talking a little bit about that, that it's an automatic part of the green certification process. So that's really nice um, that even because I was at home, they went and looked through the cleaners that I used, right, at, at my home. Um, we looked at all the faucets, the sh you know, the shower heads. Um, it was just a wide array of like being way more sustainable um, and luckily for me at that time, in the beginning, I was working from home so it could be my house. And then when I moved into a retail location, um, I had to go through the same process again. And again, they did the same thing, looking at, you know, um, am I using recycled paper towels? Um, what kind of bulbs are, do we have in? Um, are things on timers? Um, you know, what's the thermostat set at? So. So that was really, it's actually very, very helpful, I think. Um, it seems like it's like, oh, another thing you have to do. You're always having to like fill out business licenses and all this stuff. But I thought it was really, really helpful in being more sustainable. Um, and it kind of, uh, you know, it, it puts you to the test. If you can do that, then you can continuously think um, about how else can you improve in your business setting and in your in your daily life right um so in that way i feel like being green certified is like it gives me a sticker of pride to be able to say that um and i think pe there are customers who are looking for that um, because they know that you've been vetted right and then um you know the the green business um Kind of group in your area will you know display you on their website but they also have a ton of resources as well that then they can share with you on um you know maybe more about marketing um how to how to bring more customers in um you know and networking with other business owners so i think it is really beneficial on a from a business perspective as well because it's a whole it's you know it's a whole nother network that you get connected to. Um, and then there's lots of opportunities for growth there and, and potentially for more business, so. Yeah, that's great. And so just as a reminder to the audience, the Green Business Network is something you can access depending on your location. So sometimes it's through your local chamber, 
uh, sometimes it's through your city, uh, but this is also a resource you can really take part of. And Energy Upgrade California works closely with the Green Business Network. So uh, we're always uh, also featuring their businesses. I believe that's how we met, um, Pilar. You were one of the uh, Energy Hero featured businesses. Yes. <laughs> so uh, yeah, jumping, talking about Energy Heroes, I suppose. Um, Walter, I know that in addition to uh, the national uh, Latino Evangelical Coalition, you wear a lot of hats in the community um, with the Sperantia project of neighborhood community entrepreneurs. So I was wondering if maybe you could talk about um, a success story from another small business you've worked with in terms of like, you know, how they started going green, started on the process of energy efficiency. Yes, uh, for, for a long time, I worked for a uh, neighborhood housing service of the County of Los Angeles, and we started a um, a farmer's market and we invited uh, lots of folks who are you know uh, growing their own products for pro produce and we have uh, created a space for them then we also have visited uh, the businesses that are much involved in healthy food and we've developed relationship with them so we also have worked with churches who we're open to uh, to uh, get a little further, and they will open and create their own little green space at their congregation, at their facility, let's say, to be able to uh, uh, build the awareness to everybody. It's all about, you know, how can we be an example and create those little natural pathways that we have. So sometimes we will go door to door with people who they will show us their own garden and they, um, we give them seeds. Uh, we, there's many, many, many things that we can do, but we have seen quite a few businesses that have uh, connected with us in order to connect with others and to create this like a snowball, you know, mm -hmm. so that it can roll and uh, the movement can start. So our ideal thing is, is uh, to be out there, to be ready to create a relationship, a conversation, don't waste any opportunity. Uh, so uh, as we connect with a lot of churches, we connect with a lot of businesses, you know, we can really give them the vision and be able to know how to provide that vision that we have. So I've seen a lot of success. Like I said, you know, on a regular basis, uh, working with the farmer's markets that we have in the city of Compton, for example. Compton is a city that is under Edison. So we've been able to take advantage of... Uh, of, uh, for, especially in COVID-19 right now, we have a lot of people giving up food because they can't go out anywhere. So we're there present to be able to remind people what they need to do in order because they're home a lot and they're spending a lot of electricity. And uh, so it's a great opportunity. Yeah, that's great to hear. I mean, bouncing back to Cindy, um, I was wondering if you could also give us a success story this time about maybe a business that went specifically through uh, your programs. Mm -hmm. um, we had one that we had, um, we have an, uh, an awards um, presentation every year, uh, an award showcase, uh, energy showcase. And so we nominate different businesses that have gone through our different programs and have real success stories with their energy efficiency savings. Um, one of these is um, an event planning company and um, they managed to cut their energy costs by 25% going through several of our businesses. Um, different things that they did. They went through our um, the Business Energy Solutions Program, which is the direct install program. They went through the um, other uh, business rebate program to install more comprehensive measures. Um, they went through our on-bill financing program as well. So everything that they ended up having to pay out of, out of pocket was financed at 0% interest through our on-bill financing program. Um, and they did all kinds of different initiatives. They created a green team, uh, started purchasing, like you said, Pilar, uh, recycled materials for their different products that they promote. Um, they did 
a, a number of other different uh, measures. So that's one of our, our real success stories is by showing that by using all of the different resources available to them, they trained their staff. Um, and a lot of it was done at no cost, you know, to them. It was just u utilizing all the different resources available to them. And I know all the other utilities offer um, similar offerings as well. Um, so it's something that I think everybody could take advantage of for sure. And that's just, you know, another reason to go energy efficient. You could get a prize, you guys. You could, you could get a prize and go on stage mm -hmm. and get an award. So yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that one was, that was a really, really good one because they were really comprehensive. I mean, they did everything that they could, they could possibly do in addition to, you know, things with SDG and eight, they, um, they implemented a lot of other different, different, uh, energy efficiency measures. So yeah, that's, that one's a real success story, I think. So definitely. And it is a small business. So they, they had their staff just really, really, um, join in and they really bought that, you know, that approval through everybody. So everybody was on team, um, green team, and everybody was on board. So it was, a, it was a group effort for sure for all of their staff. So that's one of the main things too, is, is um, making sure that everybody in your organization has that kind of same passion or they adopt that same passion um, to make it work. If, Cause it is, it is work, you know, it is that the, the behavioral part of it. It's not just changing out of equipment, it's changing a whole mindset to be more energy efficient and think about it every day as you're, you know, as you're going about your day, just think about, well, you know, this doesn't need to be on right now, <laughs> or, you know, this doesn't need to be running right now. And just try to, you know, check everything around you and make sure that you're using it in the most efficient way possible. And then if you're able to do some upgrades, then even better. Yeah, and what Energy Upgrade California is always stressing is the behavioral side of things, because um, we want to make it easy for all Californians to participate. So throughout this panel, we've been really referring to a lot of behavioral changes. And just to give examples of things that we mean when we say that, um, it's things like, I don't need this light on because I'm not in the room. Let me turn it off. It's, you know, let me change from CFL light bulbs to LED light bulbs. It's things like, oh, you know, it's summer, I have the AC on, but I can stand to have it at 78. I don't need to have it at 60 degrees. Mm -hmm. Or even, you know, when it's time to, um, most businesses, uh, their, their main uses of energy come from the HVAC system. So that's heating and cooling and from their lighting. And so if you just tackle those two things, you can see a huge benefit to your business uh, on the environmental side and obviously um, to your bottom line. And so that can start off with things that are easy, like, you know, when you use your HVAC system, make sure you've changed or cleaned the filters. It depends on your system. Make sure you've changed or cleaned the filters at least once a year, um, every six months, if there's like a lot of pets um, or if someone's got allergies, things like that. Uh, and you can see an enormous benefit to these already. So it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, go ahead and install solar. You can really start off with these behavioral changes. Mm -hmm. um so yeah, yeah. Totally. i think we're pretty much ready for uh audience questions uh, unless the panelists um just want to go around one one more time and kind of ask you guys like what what is one energy tip that you want everyone here to leave with if you had to only pick one i'm gonna put you on the spot <laughs> For me, I would say get a programmable thermostat because where I live, it's very hot. <laughs> and that's where the majority of my personal, and now that I'm home all day as well, um, you know, I'm using uh, more energy, of course, you know, all the, the computer equipment and things like that. But the air conditioner is one thing that I'm still using um, until hopefully after this month, it'll start to cool down. But my summer bills are really high, <laughs> fortunately. So just like you said, moving that thermostat up, trying to utilize the cold air in the mornings maybe and open some windows and then um, use fans when I can as opposed to the air conditioner is one thing. So that's my personal uh, thing that I battle with <laughs> as well. And Pilar? Yeah, I think... Um... Probably that would be one of my suggestions. Um, 
is I actually live in a place that uh, doesn't have air conditioning. So I'm forced to use the cold air um, in, in the morning and then shut all the blinds mm -hmm. about 10 o'clock in the morning. Once I got it nice and cooled off, shut all the blinds and kind of keep it dark and cold inside. Um, but I would, I would say for a business, if it's, Wherever you're running it, um, you know, light bulbs are a huge, a huge change. I mean, it's, you can, I was given, I was given bulbs, um, I think by my green certification folks, I was, I've gotten them at like, uh, for really low cost at like, um, kind of like reuse places. Um, and then I've, well, I've bought them, I've bought, and now there's some really nice bulbs, like in all different shapes. They aren't all funky and weird. You can get, um, great led bulbs that look good. And mm -hmm. it's amazing how little wattage they put off and also heat, you know, you don't realize how, how hot bulbs get. So if you're, if you have a retail space where you have a lot of lighting, it's, it's adding heat to your environment. So I think. That's probably one of the easiest things. Um, and also cutting down your lighting. Um, when I had a retail shop, I just tried to use the natural light as much as possible. Um, and that way I didn't need a lot of fixtures. So it kept the price down as far as I didn't have to buy a ton of fixtures. And I, I didn't have to like change a bunch of bulbs. Um, so I would say that that's, that's a huge thing as a business. Um, and as just a person who lives in a location that has electricity, you know, check, check your bulbs. Definitely. Then Walter, if you could give us your favorite energy tip. Well, I will say that, you know, I, I use the word intentional. We, we have to be, you know, I walk around my house and I make sure, you know, my certain lights are not on. Sometimes we are, you know, afraid and, and we leave lights on at night thinking that that's somehow it's going to protect us. That's my uh, security system. Security. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we don't need that. You know, I think we have to be very intentional. I think also at the time of use, the time that we use our energy, it's very, very, very important. So find out what is the time of use. Make sure that, you know, you use as, as less and we can't because we have bad habits, bad habits that need to be changed for good habits. And that is by being intentional, walk around, even in your company, show others. And so they say, what are you doing? Why are you turning all the lights off? Well, I am trying to teach you and others to be good stewards of the energy. That's why I am turning some lights off. I think everybody does that. You know, I've been in companies and places and churches and places they have lights on all the time. And there's no need to have them on. So why don't you put a timer or just, just shut them off? That's very important. Okay, and I think we can start with uh, audience questions are starting to fill up in this corner. So first one, I think it's just gonna be um, for all the panelists. Uh, as a micro business, it's oftentimes hard to work on the business because we're working in the business. What are a few moves we can make today uh, that have the highest ROI, return on investment, keeping in mind limited time and resources? Uh, you know, I was the epitome of a micro business because at first I was the business owner and the sole employee <laughs> and the person who like built everything in my shop and painted and, you know, I was did everything. So um, I think... For as far as return on investment, I guess you have to, you have to make, you have to decide, uh, you know, are you just doing this to be, to help a little bit with the environment or are you on board to like show yourself as a green business? Because once you make that decision to be a green business or to get a green certification, you kind of need to, to do as much as you can. And like I said, you know, making that choice actually is pretty easy. And there are, you know, people in place to help you. So it's not going to be a ton of work, you just have to kind of like sign up for it, put your information in, and be willing to have people come and tell you what you need to do. Um, 
So I think um, if you are just wanting to like do something really quickly, I think, you know, going with what some of the things we talked about, you know, changing the thermostat, changing your bulbs, um, getting, you know, you can put lights on ti uh, timers. Like if you have a retail space, you know, the light should be on timers um, or uh, the bathroom light should be on a timer because people don't need to, it doesn't need to be lit when nobody's in the bathroom. Um, those kinds of things are really easy, like one, two, three, punch it out and you can kind of forget about it. But if you decide that you really want to show yourself as, you know, and obviously those things are going to save you money. If you want to show yourself as a green business and market yourself that way, which is what I did, you know, it was important to me uh, personally, but I also realized at the time that I started my business, if I marketed myself as a green business um, in my particular business, which was floral design, there weren't other people doing it. So I could stand out and I could gain more customers so I could bring more money in. So it was, it was twofold. So really being as sustainable and, and eco-friendly as possible for me and my business is going to help me bring in more customers. So every single thing that I do. So really, you know, I, I get it. I do everything. This is actually not the only business that I own now. <laughs> but once you start in that mindset, you know, it, to me, it's really important. And it is like the number one priority on the top of the list of what my business stands for. So I'm gonna try to make every decision as sustainable as possible. Um, yeah. Okay. Right, and uh, next question. I think this one is aimed more at Cindy. Are there resources available that I can refer to down the road? Where can I go to get these resources? So quickly, I'm gonna plug our site again, energyupgradeca.org. And you can see a variety of um, energy tips there. There's even a digital kit for small businesses that you can download kind of like a checklist. So you can cross off like, what am I doing? What else can I do? So that's always helpful. But Cindy, I know SDG&E also has specifics. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. I think probably the other IOUs have similar materials. So I was just looking, but um, we have places where you can go and just learn about energy efficiency tips for uh, particular industry tips for offices, you know, the kinds of things that offices can change. It's like you said, behavioral things and, and small operational things that you could probably change um, to see a lot of energy savings. Um, so there's a lot of resources there. All the utilities have some sort of um, like energy innovation center like we have for San Diego Gas and Electric. Um, they have their own version, Energy Resource Center. I know um, SCE has that. Um, those are great places to look. I, they're not necessarily open to the public right now, um, at least for our Energy Innovation Center isn't, but we still have online classes. Um, so you can go to the IOU websites and sign up for all kinds of um, specific business um, classes, specific technology classes, anything that you want to learn about. Um, we have still class, lots of classes that you could take and they're online. So it's, it's easy, even easier to take some of those classes as well. Um, and I think again, just going to your individual IOU website and you can usually find a link that is energy efficient specific, both for residential and commercial. And there's a lot of helpful tips and information in there. Right. And uh, sorry to bombard you, but I think this question is also okay. <laughs> How do I measure how well my company is doing in terms of going green or being more sustainable? Do you have specific metrics I should be paying attention to? Um, I think that now that energy efficiency really is, is huge, um, there's a lot of different avenues that you can take. You can go and create, make sure to have a My Account on your specific IOU website. Sign up for that because you can look at your energy usage, not just like your day, your mo monthly bill, but your real time energy usage. So you can see how little changes that you're making affect your energy usage and your bill ultimately. So that's one thing that I think everybody should do. And even, you know, so say you have a micro business, that's a great place to start. You can do that fairly easily. It's, you know, no cost and you can learn more about how your specific business is using energy. 
Um, there's other things like um, Green Button is another analyzing tool that you can use that looks at your um, energy efficiency. And if you want to get even a little bit more um, in-depth information about your specific um, sustainability, you can uh, create an account on Portfolio Manager, which is run by the, the EPA. Um, and that's something that we started doing a few years ago, um, helping people do their benchmarking. So it's basically called energy benchmarking. And you can go on Portfolio Manager, create an account, you enter all of your uh, business information in there, and you can actually have it connect to um, to upload your energy usage from your bill, actually. Um, and it will analyze it. It will give you tips. It will tell you where you stand compared to other businesses that are similar to yours across the country. Um, it, it has a lot, a lot of uh, helpful information. So that's that's really where I think if you're really wanting to get more information, you could do the Energy Star. You can do that from there. So it all connects together. And so that's a great place to start as well. All right. And we've got uh, two last questions in, uh, as we tick down. So I often think about going green and using sustainable resources, but sometimes they're more expensive than other products. How do I know if it's worth the move to pay a bit more for a sustainable product? My business isn't necessarily branded as a sustainable business, but I'd like to start doing my part. And I think we can actually merge this with the last question, mm -hmm. which is how can I tell customers about the small moves I'm making in terms of marketing? Um, I'm starting in by no means a green business or eco-friendly business. so. I think sometimes the the ROI in terms of paying a little bit more for green products or for going green comes from the business that you then attract by branding yourself as a green business. So, um, Pilar, you want to take this one? Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, you, when you make those moves, you have to tell people. So I think the, the second question actually answers the first question, right? If you maybe you're not quite ready to jump in to be completely like all green and sustainable, even though nobody is, right? It's, it's a process, um, but you've decided to, you have to go containers and you've decided to use compostable ones that are more expensive. Then you talk about it. If you have a place where people are coming to get the to-go containers, put up signage, let them know that you've made this decision and that you are taking the environment um, into consideration and this is a part of who you are in your business and they're going to say oh yeah i really like that that business because they are actually thinking about you know me and my planet and um they may more come to you more often right especially now in these times i'm always like where am i can i go to get food where they're using compostable um containers instead of plastic ones so i think opting for something that's a little bit more expensive and then sharing it. You really have to tell people, oh, you know, if, if it's something that you can't see that you put a little tag on it, you know, your product and you say, hey, guess what we did to be more eco-friendly? We made this change. Um, you know, we're being, we're trying to go green by doing this. Um, you know, on my business card, it says like, this is made from recycled paper. I know it's made from recycled paper, but I want to tell other people I made that decision and I want you to know about it so you know that I am a good person <laughs> and you come to me for the next time you want, you know, my flowers or, you know. So it's, it's really mark really seeing it as a marketing potential um, as well as obviously taking care of this planet. Yeah, and um, I guess as a conclusion, I also want to urge participants, if you go to energyupgradecacommunity.org, then you can download a lot of, you go to our resource tab there, you can download a lot of social media. So you can also have these pre-made graphics and boost your business. Um, let people know that you're eco-friendly. Like, I know we all want to be humble, Reverend, I know we all want to be humble, but sometimes business is not the place for it. You want people to know what you're doing. So yeah, I think this wraps us up. It is exactly 12. Um, thanks again to all the panelists, Cindy, Pilar, Walter. Uh, thanks so much. And uh, thanks again to the Hispanic Chamber for hosting us. Thank, Thank you. you.